Now the meeting app is gonna to need to primarily run client-side code within tabs in the Microsoft Teams client. However, we do have some requirements for server-side logic. So for example, we have two. We are gonna to need to obtain an access token using the Azure AD uh, support for the OAuth 2 on behalf of Flow. And we're gonna use this to take the SSO token that Microsoft Teams gives us and we're gonna exchange it with Azure AT to obtain the token that we can use to call uh, the Microsoft Graph endpoint to get information about the Microsoft Teams meeting. And then we're also gonna use it because we're gonna to need to read and write details about our stand-up meetings uh, that we have to some sort of a database in a persistent store. When our attendees submit topics, we wanna to be able to save those for later use. So the meeting can collect additional information for meeting attendees. So again, we're gonna do this about use topics to discuss and present during the meeting. Um, in a production app, now you're probably gonna to wanna to store these in a secure persistent store. Um, however, in this demo that I'm doing here, I'm gonna keep this very simple and store the data for the standup meeting topics in just a local um, JSON files on my development uh, machine, uh, just to, to simplify this and focus on the Teams aspect of our app. So to satisfy these requirements, I may need to create an API uh, for our application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install uh, a few things. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the console in our app, and I'm gonna paste in this string here. Now what this is gonna do is I'm gonna install the JSON web, web tokens package, the JWKS RSA package, the in Azure AD MSAL node package and the node persist package. I'm gonna go ahead and install all of these. So while these are installing, let me explain what these are gonna be used for. The JSON web token is gonna be used for us to work with JWT, file, uh, JWT tokens um, that we receive back, these security tokens. The JWKS-RSA is gonna be used to um, parse out the security uh, or the certificates um, that Azure AD uses to sign tokens so that we can use that to verify the digital signature. The Azure AD MSAL node package, that's what we're gonna be using to actually um, make our request and authenticate with Azure AD. And node persist, that's used for our local in-memory uh, database that we're gonna have uh, for our, our meeting app uh, project. I'm also gonna install some developer dependencies uh, like the graph types, the node persist uh, type declarations, um, type declarations for the JSON web token package and for the node persist uh, package as well. So it's gonna make my, my developer experience a little bit easier. Okay, so now that's done, we look at our package.json and we can see we've got all of those packages we installed. Um, there's msal node, there's JWKS, JWKS RSA and the JSON web token as well as node persist, and then we have some developer dependencies uh, that went with it as well. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to our server uh, folder in our project. I'm gonna create a new folder here called API. And inside of this API folder, I'm gonna create a new file called the auth, authutils.ts. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste some code in here and explain what this does uh, briefly. So what this code does is I've got a method here called get signing keys. And what that does is it's gonna use the JWKS uh, package that we just created or that we just installed to go request all of the uh, keys that are used by Azure AD. This is an anonymous request. And we're gonna use that uh, to match a specific um, key that we get back in the header of the request or of the JWT token that we get back from um, Microsoft Teams and from Microsoft Graph and Azure AD. Um, this way we're gonna be able to use this to verify that this token we got back is actually coming from um, Azure AD and it was signed by Azure AD. We also have a method that we're going to, that we're going to um, expose here called validate token. And it's just gonna use that method we just defined above to effectively say, go look at uh, the token we got, call the verify method, and we're gonna pass in the token, and or the, we're gonna use the library called JWT, call the verify method, pass in the token we got back from Microsoft Teams or from Azure AD, or they're both coming from Azure AD, 
get using the signing keys and then passing in any validation options like making sure that it's intended for um, our app. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an API router uh, for our project. So I'm going to do that by coming over here and creating a new API file, a new file in our API folder, and we're going to call this our standup agenda router.ts. And in here I'm going to paste this in. So we have our standup agenda router that we've defined. Now with the API router created, I'm going to need to add three endpoints to it. All right, so our three endpoints is going to be, we have a couple different things we're going to do. So we have, let's go ahead and add these in. All right, so let's see what these are. So our first endpoint that we've added here is called, is the meeting details. And it's going to accept a get request. And it's going to, the second uh, part of the path is going to be the ID um, of our meeting. It's going to implement the on behalf of flow as well. Um, so what this does is when I request the meeting details, it's going to pass in the token. So I'm going to validate the token and then I'm going to get an on behalf of flow token. And so what that does is that is using, um, scroll down a little bit farther. What that's doing is it's going to be issuing a request using uh, the Azure AD uh, MSAL node um, package that we just that we installed. And it's going to issue requests to create a confidential client application using our app ID and the secret that we used for our, our tenant. So those are all the environment variables that we specified. It's requesting, it's passing in uh, uh, the request for the token. So it's gonna, it's gonna acquire a token on behalf of, use the token that we have. So it's passing in the token. There's the assertion we're doing and the scopes. These are the permissions that we're requesting. So it's then gonna use the token that we got from Microsoft Teams to pass that in. Now what we've done, once, once we've gotten our token, actually restate that, we're gonna use that token we just got that you can see right here, and we're gonna use that to issue a request to Microsoft Graph. So remember from our slides, we're gonna issue a request for the chat endpoint after we've stripped off all of the leading zero um, hash and the trailing hash zeros from the um, uh, meeting ID that was passed in on the URL. I'm going to get an instance of that chat and then I'm going to use that same chat value to get the uh, to issue a request for our online meetings and match it to the specific URL uh, of our meetings join URL. What that's then going to do is that is going we're going to grab the first meeting that was returned, which it should be the only meeting um, that was returned. And that's going to give us back the actual uh, details of the actual meeting. So there's our meeting, there's the data, we're going to get the first one that came back, and we're going to return that back to the caller. Next, we're going to add some, another endpoint for stand-up topics. This is going to read the stand-up topics for the current meeting from our little JSON database and return that back to the caller. And then the third method that we're going to implement is going to write those, um, is going to issue, accept the post, and it's going to write the stand-up topics for the current meeting to our JSON database. All right, so we're just going to format the code so everything looks good, and we are in good shape. Now, the next thing I need to do, now that we've created our API router, is I need to register uh, it with the server when the server spins up. So I'm going to go over here to the server.ts file. And what I need to do is I need to import two statements at the top. The first one is going to be our standup router, and the other one is going to be the node persist uh, database. Now, the next thing I need to do is let's go, let's scroll down to the statement where we have a use statement right here. So there's our use statement. And right before the statement for Express, which is our web server, I'm going to um, add my router as a uh, add routing for my custom API. So I say any request that comes into slash API slash standup agenda, load my router. So I'll have slash API slash standup agenda slash meeting details, or I'll have slash uh, standup dash topics like we um, we specified in our two handlers above. Now, finally, I just need to initialize the JSON um, 
the JSON database uh, inside of our, um, our when the server starts. So I'm going to do that by right after when we create the server, right after it gets created, I'm then going to call the init method, which is going to say I want you to asynchronously call init. The, fi the, the database is going to be stored in a DB folder in our project, and then this is how we're going to do stringify and parsing, and then there's the encoding that we have.